high hopes. Some of you regular-sized patrons may have looked around the restaurant tonight and noticed more than the usual number of big, beautiful people. No, we're not having an all-you-can-eat special. In fact, it's just the opposite. These brave, beefy brothers and sisters are all members of Pounds Off Now. And they're staying here at the hotel on an intensive weight reduction program. So this is the old sun man saying, even though you start to quake over chocolate cake, don't be greedy and grab. Oops, there goes another inch of that. Oops, there goes another inch of that. Oops, there goes another inch of that. Look, I know it's hard, but be strong and order from your special menu. How about some nice broiled whitefish? I hate whitefish. So do I. How about some broiled chicken? Will you leave the skin on? Wait a minute, now you're getting crazy on me. <laughs> what would you like? The last rites. We're all starving to death. Look, folks, I know how difficult this is for you. What you're doing here is really admirable. You know, about a month ago, I had to lose three pounds. Okay. I know that may not sound like much, but I'm not big boned. You are showing such strength, such willpower, such self control. Thank you. Now, what would you like? A bowl of whipped cream. They don't look any thinner than they did yesterday, but they sure are meaner. That guy over there almost bit my head off. If he had, he would have eaten it. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Could I have a little extra rope for dressing? Sure. <laughs> you almost got me. Bring me the damn dressing. You don't get no tip. I don't care about the tip, but can't we be civil? Not without the dressing. OK, that's the way you want it. Excuse me, I'm going on my donut break. I'm not going to wash the cottage cheese. Well, you don't use soap or anything. All it means is. I know what it means. I'm a chef. Oh. Look, you wash the cottage cheese. I've skinned their chicken, I've steamed their vegetables. Now you want me to wash the cottage cheese? You don't need a cook, you need a dry cleaner. Howard, don't tell me what I need. I know what I need. And I'm willing to wait till you need it, too. That's it. I try to be nice, I try to be sensitive. If you want to keep those lardos from having salt, give me a gun. <laughs> you know, frankly, I'm disappointed in all of you. I mean, here we have a group of people who are trying to improve their health and get a new start in life. Well, what they're doing is commendable, and all you can do is complain how hard it is. But well, this should be a piece of cake. Don't say that out there. <laughs> You're right, Nancy. You know, I've never seen you so caring about a group of people before. I've never served such small portions for such high prices before. <laughs> Amy, your father's here. My father? He never told me he was coming. <gasps> Ain't this a kicker? <laughs> now, why do you suppose your father came here all the way from Texas? Probably heard we washed the cottage cheese. <laughs> Oh, sure. Mama's fine. Grandma's fine. Old Blue's over the mange, back up on the couch. <laughs> Excuse me, would you pass those rolls? Well, certainly. Don't do it, Daddy. Do it, Daddy. Do it. <laughs> now, you behave yourself. Uh, look, you're busy. Uh, no, no. We can talk later after you get off work. Oh, yeah. no, Daddy. I'll take my break right now. Oh, fine. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> Waitress, can I have some butter? No. What's the deal here? Is everything on the cart? <laughs> oh, I don't want her. You can have her. She's too fat for me. She's too fat for me. She's too fat for me. Oh, I don't want her. You can have her. Been a lot of changes in Snyder since you've been gone, darling. They're serving hot sandwiches down to flying egg. Really? French dip. Oh. Daddy, I really think you're gonna like it here. I'll show you all around, and well, we'll just have ourselves a good old time. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you came all the way out here from Texas. What's so important? Uh, well, Amy, 
Reverend Hardy retired. Well, that may be a real good thing, Daddy, because he was getting a little shaky on the baptism. <laughs> he almost lost a few in the river. Honey, he wasn't that bad. Oh, yeah? Remember when he held me down, I had to come up spitting. Yeah, he did have a way of getting you a little nearer to God than you ever really wanted to be. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I got talking to the new preacher, uh, Reverend Wilborn. Has a sister out here. He's been out to visit more than once, and he says this city is a hotbed of sin and corruption. Daddy, that's what Reverend Hardy used to say about Snyder. The thing is, I'm not so sure I should ever let you come out here in the first place. Daddy, this town isn't as bad as all that. Just take a look around for yourself and make up your own mind. But I got no time, honey. I, just, I promised Reverend that I'd drive down and visit with his sister in Azusa. But I'm going to be back here tomorrow night, so you'll be all packed and ready to go home. people leave in a few days. No cream, no butter, no red meat, no sugar, no eggs. There is no joy in this for me, Nancy. Power, these people are money in the bank. You'll have to look for joy elsewhere. You're not going to talk about your water bed again, are you? <laughs> what big ears you have. The better to hear that Howard doesn't want to go to Grandma's house. <laughs> There's something wrong with Amy. She's been in the bathroom ever since her father left. What? That was hours ago. Well, she better be dead or I'm docking her. Amy? You in there? Yes. Are you ever coming out? In a minute, I'm washing my face. Still? She must be down to the bone by now. <laughs> you OK? No, you're not. You've been crying. <laughs> oh, come on, kid. What's wrong? My daddy wants me to move back to Snyder. Is that why your father came here? To get you to move back? And you're gonna go? Wait a minute. You're an adult. Got a good job. You're happy. Now, I know those are the things that drive parents crazy, but you can't go. <laughs> why does he want you to move back home? He thinks L.A. is sinful. That's why I came here. <laughs> well, this is crazy, right? She doesn't want to go. Of course. Some like it hot. It was on the television the other night. We're going to dress you up like a girl. No, no, better yet, we're going to dress you up like a boy. Can you play a saxophone? Doesn't matter. You can fake it. OK, a friend of mine has an all-man band. We're going to sneak you in. You will go on bus tours, and he'll never find you. OK, so it's a little rough around the edges. Amy, you're a grown woman, a term that describes most of us and there comes a time when you have to stand up to your parents. He'll hate me. If you married Prince, he'd hate you. <laughs> this will get over. No one is saying it's going to be easy, but you have to live your own life now. You're right. If I'm going to live like an adult, I'm going to have to act like an adult. Are you listening to this? <laughs> Whitefish plain. Oh boy, my ears at Cordon Bleu are about to be tested. Steamed carrots plain. Even rabbits don't like them that way. And a side of lemon wedges. Mmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Oh, that's okay. I'll think of an excuse for you. I'm not that late. <laughs> it's Friday night. <laughs> Want to go to Chippendales after work? Just for the food. I can't. I'm sleeping at the Coliseum. Jan, if you don't want to go, just say so. I mean, even I could come up with a better excuse than that. No, I mean it. Springsteen tickets are going on sale tomorrow. Ellen and I are sleeping in line. Boy, it's rough being a parent, but I suppose if Ellen really wants to go that bad... They're from me. She hates Springsteen. I couldn't find a babysitter. <laughs> Howard, give me a double Chateaubriand well marble, sauce bernays, cream spinach, baked potato with the works, and a Napoleon for dessert. You're not just doing this to make me feel better, are you? No, it's for the guy at table six. Let's go out there and kiss him on the mouth. <laughs> well, 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 look who's here. I haven't seen you in many a year. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. Who baked a cake? Who baked a cake? Hey, shut up. I... <laughs> I'll be 
Did you enjoy your meal? Not really. How about a bowl of fresh fruit for dessert? No. Okay. Well, I'll get your check. If you want a tip, you'll find it in the fountain on the first floor. When you put it in, make a wish, because that's the only way you're going to get more service. <laughs> Can I get you some more celery? Jan? Yes. Cynthia. Cynthia Winslow. Hi. Cynthia! Oh. Wow! I, I mean, hi! <laughs> I didn't recognize... Cynthia! I've changed a lot since high school, huh? No. Well, yeah, a little. Jan, it's okay. Took me a long time to understand what happened, too. What did happen? Well, when we graduated high school, I got married and moved away from home. I missed everybody. I was depressed, so I ate. I can understand that. <laughs> then I got divorced, which depressed me, so I ate. I know the feeling. <laughs> then I hated my job, which depressed me, so I ate. Uh, I'm beginning to see a pattern here. <laughs> then there was nothing to depress me, so I was depressed, so I ate. Cynthia, you ate too much. <laughs> Depressing, isn't it? I'll get you some carrot sticks. Thanks for covering for me. Did you talk to your father? Not yet. Well, he just got back from Azusa. Oh, I know how you feel. When I was 17, I backed the car into the mailbox. I can still remember how difficult it was to tell my father. Mm. How'd you do it? I'm gonna. <laughs> Ladies, the pound's off now. People are getting meaner by the minute. Now, either you go back to work immediately, or I'll tell them that your pockets are filled with M&Ms. <laughs> How's Azusa? It's going. Cool, we're leaving. No, we're not. Yes, we are, honey. Now get in the car. Diddy. Diddy, I love you. And I want to make you happy. But I'm staying. If that's the way you want it. Bye, Amy. Diddy, why don't you stay and we can spend some time together? You've made your decision, girl. And what you decided is that you don't want to be part of our family anymore. I just don't know how I'm going to explain this to your mom. Daddy, come back. You guys cover for me. I'm not going to let him break her heart that way. I'll be right back. Where has everyone gone? Well, well, see, it's like this. Uh, Amy's father wants her to move back home, only she doesn't want to go. So we told her that she Stop. should... Go to the lounge, find Jan, bring her back. I'll get Cassie. <laughs> Sonny, you're going to be alone for a minute. Try to imitate a human being. You know, folks, people always say to me, Sonny, you're a brilliant composer and lyricist. Why don't you play more of your own songs? Wait! What are you doing? You've left a room full of starving people up there. You booked them, not me. <sighs> Listen. I, I don't have time. The man is in a hurry, Cassie. Tough cheese. <laughs> you just can't walk out on your daughter like that. She made her decision, and I'm in a hurry. Not anymore, you're not. Cassie, you've stopped the elevator. We were stuck. Trapped. <laughs> Excuse me, young woman. No? Has anyone else noticed the lack of air in here? You're being unreasonable. Yeah, I guess it's catching. Cassie, I want you to start this elevator. No. What if I fire you? What if I don't care? What if I admit that I have severe claustrophobia? You hear that, pal? We don't have too much time before she starts going berserk. Look, Amy is a wonderful person. Wonderful. She's unbelievable. Oh, she makes sense, doesn't she? Cassie is very wise. I'm too young to die. No, you're not. Uh oh. You don't think your daughter is a good girl? Boy, you've got some set of standards, pal. If she were any better, they'd have statues of her in front of churches. I have nothing more to say. Well, you better start thinking, because we're not moving until you talk to Amy. All right, Hayseed, I want you to listen up, and I want you to listen up now. <laughs>
Second, let's not forget Mr. Snifter. <laughs> All right, Freeze, drop the rolls. <laughs> what if your parents moved out here? No, that's crazy. What if we all moved to Texas? I'm grasping at straws, aren't I? Daddy. Cassie says I should talk to you. Talking's good. Talking's always good. Yeah, talking is very important. Talking is what separates man from the animals. Except parrots. Good point, Doc. Look, let's go call your father and tell him about the mailbox. Oh, he's probably eating now. <laughs> I, uh, forgot my order book. <laughs> Just taking a break, right? You realize how difficult this is for him? And you realize how difficult this is for her? You both realize how difficult this is for me, but there's no talking going on here. Doesn't seem to be much to say. Well, just tell each other how you really feel. But with speaking. <laughs> Look, Amy, you know what's on your father's mind. He's worried about you being here all alone in Los Angeles. Well, I already told him not to worry. This town is nothing but a bunch of Snyder strung together. <laughs> Telling someone who's worried not to worry doesn't mean they're gonna stop worrying. Oh, that's not it. He knows I didn't come to L.A. to get in trouble. There was plenty of opportunity for that back in Snyder. Then, uh, what is his problem? You got me. The problem is I miss you. I miss you, Amy. Well, the other day I came home with a sack of red licorice, and you're the only one in the house that ever liked that stuff. I just can't get used to the idea that you're not there anymore. You know, I've been thinking, too. I could call more than once a week. And shoot. I could just hop on a plane every now and then and come and throw you Sorry, honey. Okay. Well, I guess I can safely say that this is the worst week for tips since I was 15 years old and working the snack bar at the Little League. <laughs> I know the pounds off people were hard to deal with, but let's face it, losing weight is murder. I know what I'm like when I'm on a diet. I get mean. My last diet, I saw this kid coming down the street eating a fudgesicle, and I bumped into him just so that he'd drop it on the sidewalk. We both cried. <laughs> Last time I tried to lose weight, I bought a box of those tasteless diet cookies. Those are awful. Not if you eat them with ice cream. <laughs> I was on one of my famous starvation diets, and Ellen forgot to take her lunch to school one day. So like a good mom, I got in the car, got about halfway there, pulled behind a billboard and ate the goo-goo pie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just the opposite. I eat and I eat and I eat, and never get an ounce. And her father wants her back. Hey, guys, look what I just found in my snifter. It's addressed to all of us. There's a note. Dear gang, thanks for the help and patience. Consider this the tips you never got. It's from the pounds off now, people. Isn't that sweet? Oh. It's a check for 500 bucks. Whoa. Wow! Hey, hey, that's $125 a person if we don't count Sunny. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's made out to the United Fund, donated in all our names. Oh, well, it's a good cause. Sure it is. Yeah, that was very thoughtful of the pounds off now people. Vicious suckers, aren't they? 